All right, welcome to Build a Blog with WordPress 6.2, a new release preview. Oh my goodness, I am so excited about the next WordPress release on March 28th, I believe, is when you'll be able to up update to uh, this on your live website. Today is a little bit of a sneak preview. Um, just a quick note about me. I'm Sarah Snow. I use pronouns she, her. Um, I'm a Florida resident by weekday and an RV traveler by weekend. We're making that happen, which is very exciting. Um, I'm a former middle school teacher. That will definitely show as we go through this presentation today. I am a parrot and charpay mom. So you may hear some barking. You may hear some chirping. You may hear some whistling. <laughs> it's just one of the realities of working from home. Um, I love to cook. I love learning languages. I'm studying Spanish right now, American Sign Language and French. I am, well, I love traveling, obviously, in the ocean. And I am a training team contributor slash mad scientist sponsored by Automatic. So, yeah, I'm bringing this content to you today with Catherine Pressner. It's my co-host. So let's talk some quick expectations. As always, stay courteous. It is so important that we always respect yourself um, and everyone in this room. Um, definitely feel free to ask and answer questions in the chat box. You are definitely welcome to ask and you are also welcome to answer. Uh, but do know that if you have a private question or concern, please, please, please message it to Catherine rather than me to make sure that we have a positive learning experience here for everyone. I can get a little distracted when I have private messages <laughs> uh, and that slows us down. So, um, and of course, stay curious and patient. We are all learning together, including me. I learn things from you every single time we run one of these. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind, and this session will be recorded. You can find those recordings on learn.wordpress.org to review at your own pace. So I'm just curious. I, I like to know where people fall before we get started because it helps me figure out like how fast or how slow I should go. Um, so how much do you already know about setting up a blog or a website um, with WordPress? One is I know almost nothing, and that is okay. Two is, hey, I'm comfortable with classic themes but not block themes. Um, three is I understand the basics of block themes. Four is I feel comfortable using block themes like on a test site. And five is, hey, I'm confident I could use a block theme on a live website. So I'm just curious where everybody is just so I can get a sense of how fast or slow I should go today. Okay, I'm seeing, oh, a big mixed crowd. This is great. So we've got some threes, some ones, some twos, some fours, some threes. Okay, okay. Well, cool. And that means that we can probably skim the basics a little bit. We'll definitely touch on them um, for sure. Um, but yeah. Ooh, four, you prefer block themes. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Mark Andrew, five. That's wonderful. Okay, so let's talk about what we're covering today. Um, we're going to cover how to set up your blog with a block theme, specifically using the 6.2 features. Um, we'll go over a few block theme basics, but we do have some courses for you. If you are a one or a two, you've never touched block themes before, and this moves a little fast, highly recommend starting with this part one simple site design with full site editing course. Um, that will get you very, very far, and it will definitely slow down. So if you're like, whoa, she clicked there and there and there, why did she do that? This, those courses can help you with that. So definitely save that link if you are brand new. Um, and we're going to go over some 6.2 features. So the new style book, whoo -hoo, I'm so excited. This fixes so many of my problems. <laughs> um, the pattern inserter, we're going to go over open verse images, uh, sticky headers and footers. And if there is time, there are some issues to work out, but um, how to uh, copy and paste already styled blocks so that you can reuse them uh, as simply as possible. So some things that we will not cover today. Um, we're not gonna go super slow. Like we're gonna touch on some basics. Um, we're not gonna go step by slow step with a blog setup. So if you're over here like, hey, I want someone to walk me through this um, and I wanna design with you, uh, we have this great online workshop. It's about two hours that does that using a lot of the tools that we use today. So I highly recommend uh, creating this WordPress blog of your own. Um, so yeah, you have that resource, save that as well if you need it. Um, so we're not going to be going over the WordPress dashboard in depth. If you are brand new to WordPress and you're watching me click all of these different places, um, we do have some courses over at learn.wordpress.org as well. So it will move a little fast because it is also doubling as a 6.2 WordPress preview. So if you're totally brand new, just know you are so welcome. You are welcome to ask questions. People who you know are threes, fours, fives, please answer those questions in the chat and we'll just keep this moving. 
Um, somebody requested that we go over adding functions to block themes with custom post types. That is an advanced topic beyond the scope of today, but I have noted it and I will probably, if I can figure it out, <laughs> figure out how to do this for a more advanced um, online workshop. So let's get started. First off, what is the topic of your blog? What is it? And it could be your website too. Like this kind of doubles as both. I just like the title build a blog, but what is the topic of your blog? Go ahead and answer in the chat box. Um, some of mine parents <laughs> talk about living with birds. I have family recipes that you'll see today. It's just for my family though. No one in their right mind should ever, uh, I mean, sorry, no one should ever use my recipes. They're not thrown together very well. <laughs> Um, I have a random personal one. The latest one I've been working on is an open source teaching, contributing stuff like adventures in WordPress. Um, and then I'm also starting a blog on attempting to travel and work with parrots in an RV. So good luck to me. But what are your blog topics? Ooh, there's one on cities and German speaking countries. I need that on my travel bucket list. That sounds fantastic. Oh, I would so read that blog. <laughs> Football one. Yes. Um, an urban hiking in and around Denver. Ooh, Lisa, yes. Ah, I can't wait for that one. <laughs> I might be utilizing that in the near future. Any others? What do you like to write about? Psychogeography and walking. Wow. I generally build websites for clients that include a blog page. Yeah, okay, beautiful. Okay. Entrepreneur over 45, WP Help Desk. Yes. Oh, such great ideas. Ah, oh, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Software projects, all of that. Ah, oh, that's so great. <laughs> cool. So um, we I sent out in an email some setup instructions if you wanted to follow along here. Um, those setup instructions can be found here. I will drop this link in the chat. Um, you are welcome to do this along with us if you would like. Um, but I'm hoping you all have some this set up already. It both sets up a local installation on your computer, and it also gets you set up to use WordPress 6.2 in a safe space that's not going to break your real website. So <laughs> let's, uh, yeah, let's let's get started. So I'm going to move over to my test blog, and right away, does anybody notice any differences? Do you see a change? Just curious. While you're writing, I'm gonna click into this editor over here. Yes, Jane, you are absolutely right. There is no longer a beta button here. Uh, the WordPress site editor has come so far that the developers felt that it was time to remove that beta flag. So that is wonderful. And yeah, so since we, we're using a block theme, there's not um, a customize button here. We're gonna be using this editor button. So if you are following along on your own, head to your WordPress dashboard, hover over appearance and editor. You're gonna notice some new things here that are coming out with 6.2. Um, the first of which is that, hey, we've got a beautiful sidebar here that shows templates, template parts. We can click through, pick different ones. And we're gonna go over what these are in just a minute. So if you're like, what are templates? What are template parts? We'll get there. Um, but it does make navigating a little bit easier. It's a little bit more intuitive. So I'm really excited about this change. So in order to move from this space to the next, you just have to click on this box to the right here, and that will take you to your site editor. Ah, cool. So let's talk about design. Uh, today we're designing primarily, so we're not necessarily writing content. We're not writing our blog posts. We're not creating like an about me page or a content or a contact page. Um, and the overall idea is to focus on the look and feel and structure of your website. So things like what always appears at the top of your website, your header, and what always appears at the bottom, your footer, um, and how your each page template is laid out. So that that's basically the topic of today's blog. So for those of you who are ones and twos and are like, whoa, like I, this is the first time I'm seeing this, um, think about your theme as a picture frame, right? So if your website is a picture frame, at the very top, when you're creating your frame, you've got your header. This often includes your logo, your site title, your tagline, maybe some navigation links, maybe a search. Um, and this is something that is generally always at the very top of your website. It allows people to find what they're looking for. 
Um, and the second thing that you'll usually find on most WordPress themes is a footer. And you'll see copyrights, navigation links, social media links, contacts, etc. So when we design today, we're going to start by creating a header, creating a footer, and then we'll work on everything in between. So once you have them, these are known as template parts. So these are things that will be reused um, across all of your different posts, all of your different pages, wherever you've set them to be used. So it's, it's an idea of, hey, design once and you don't have to do this again and again and again on every page. So it's very, very cool in that. So in between, we have our templates. Um, so this structures the way different pages look and are laid out. It's kind of like the center of your, of your photo frame. So you're going to see some templates that include a page title, right? And that pulls information from pages. So if you're making, you know, a standard four page website, you might have home, about us, contact, and I don't know, privacy policy or something. Um, whatever you name each of those pages in the dashboard, that's where that appears. Um, and then you'll find your page content. Anything that you write uh, in those poster pages gets pulled through and shows through within this picture frame. So, and that'll all be in between your header and your footer. Um, and different pages can be set up to display um, in different ways, right? So we've got a page template. This is how a general page might look. Um, meanwhile, a blog template might look something more like this, where it has, you know, whatever your blog's featured images, your post title, the date it was published, and maybe an excerpt, right? So this is pulling directly from a different dashboard. So for those of you who are super new, um, you can kind of see this here, right? So this one is set up as a blog right now. We've got a Hello World blog post. That's the title of the blog. You don't write um, in this site editor. You don't write your content there. So I'm going to head back to my dashboard over here. Um, you'll notice here, um, if I click Add New, give it a title. Uh, Fighting Birdies. Apparently, I made it all caps before this. I don't know why I did that. That's okay. Um, I can write my content here. I'm just going to take this and move this over into my post settings here. Um, again, this is going to move a little fast, but I'm just going to drop this in my excerpt. I'm going to publish it. And you can see when I head to my website that the post title appeared here, the excerpt appeared here, here's the date. So these templates structure the way WordPress pulls things in from uh, your pages and your posts. So that is the quick overview of how your theme works. And I don't see any questions yet in the chat. All right, looks like y'all are with me. So let's keep going. <laughs> So the first change with 6.2 solves a very uh, interesting problem. And that is when you're first looking at your website, there's not a lot there. Um, so it's really hard to know what it is that you're styling. Um, so if you have an empty website, the style book is gonna fix this problem. So someone asked, hey, I keep having to adjust the font size when I add a block. Is there a setting to edit the default font size when adding a block so that you can set it once and forget it? And then anytime you write a paragraph, that should be the, the right one. And the answer is yes with the style book. So let's find it together now. Um, I'm going to head to my dashboard, WordPress 6.2, available March 28th. Um, if I head to Appearance and Editor, one change from 6.1 is that now you have to click in here in order to find all of your different tools. Um, we're going to head to a place called our styles. So you see this little half moon up here in the corner. That is our style setting. This is the option where you can go and set what you want your website to look like in one spot and have it apply everywhere. Now, there's not a lot on this blog right now. Um, so the way that we can figure out what all of our different blocks are going to look like is through this little eye icon here. This is the new 6.2 style book. So go ahead and click that button and you're going to be taking to a page that looks like this. And this style book is a representation of every single block um, that your website can be built with just out of the box. So you can add blocks to your WordPress website with plugins, but the ones that come standard, this is where you find them. And it's organized in your text, in your media. Um, so images, videos, things like that. Uh, 
You also have your design tools over here so you can figure out, hey, what's, what are your buttons going to look like? Um, what might columns look like? It allows you to see what you're doing as you're doing it. You also have widgets, so like your calendars, and you also have themes. So this is things like what your navigation will look like, what your site logo will look like, what the title is, um, if you have a tagline, what that'll look like. So you can see very, very quickly the changes that we're about to make. So if you're using the 2023 block theme, uh, there's this button here called Browse Styles. Uh, styles are not part of the style book. They came out with 6.1. Not all block themes offer this. But if they do, uh, you may have several different color variations to choose from. So I'm going to show you what happens to every single block just by choosing a different, um, a different style. And you can do the same thing as well if you would like. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll notice that my text has gone from black to white and the background has gone from white to black. You can see that there is a color overlay that has been automatically applied to every image in here. Um, you can see that in, under design, my buttons have completely changed colors. So this is a very, very quick way to see kind of what you're doing. So let's say that this, your theme doesn't offer this let's, or that you want to have like a lot more control, right? Um, I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick this one. This looks really nice. And the way that you can edit it so that all of your headings look a certain way, your paragraphs, et cetera, it's going to be through your global styles here. So this allows you to design once and have confidence that whatever you write, if you're writing a post, if you're writing a page, your choices will automatically be applied there, which saves you so much time. So you can explore a lot of these options here. So for example, typography, um, you can change your font size, a few clicks of a button there. Um, you can change your fonts. Different themes offer different fonts, um, but you can also use plugins as well to insert a couple more. Um, but now you can see how this change ha has been applied to my entire website. So the text under my list is the same text as um, is in a paragraph, is the same text that's in a heading. Um, you also have a lot of control over, of course, the colors in your website. So I could change my background from this dark black to maybe, I don't know, a dark blue, just with a quick click of a button and see how that change applies to everything. And I think the thing that I like the most about this is because I can go through and I can see what is going to look like what before I do it, um, I can check and make sure, hey, is my contrast bright enough? Is this accessible? So for example, um, this calendar, I've noticed uh, with this particular style variation, like that does not have great contrast. So I also have the ability to go in block by block. Now, before it was 6.1 in order to figure out like, where do you even design? Where, where do you click the buttons to make the calendar change stuff? You used to do that through styles um, and you still can. And you would do that by, you know, heading to your global styles and clicking on blocks. 6.2 allows you to just click on it. And voila, I am now looking specifically at the calendar block. So let's say that I want to make this more accessible, right? Because having strong contrast is so important. Um, I can say, you know, I don't really like the background of this. What happens if I make this, I don't know, a more neutral background? Okay, now everybody can see the um, the writing, but it's still like it's pretty faint. So I'm just going to experiment with this a little bit and just see what I can do here to make. Ah, there we go. Now I've got a dark black background and bright white text. Now this is accessible. And I was able to see that without even having to add a calendar to my website. So it's really, really powerful here. Um, yeah. So what this means is that not only can you stylize um, your website on a global scale, changing all of your colors with the click of a button, you also have the option to work on specific blocks as well. So let's say that I'm writing, making a writer's website. Um, and I know that I want my quotes because I'm a writer to always pop. I want it to be a little different than my lists, than my, if I can scroll up, than my headings, than my general text, my paragraph text. I can click on this. It will bring me to that specific quote. And now I can adjust the typography. So I'm going to make it super large. Um, I think I want to make it, I don't know, 
italic. Oh, now we're going somewhere, right? I could even change the color, right? All of that I can do without using any code, um, which is a huge departure from classic themes, which required you to know CSS. So it's really exciting. But now this is something that I learned the hard way that I'm going to show you um, in changing this quote block here. Um, anything that I do to the rest of the text uh, will not be applied to this quote block because I've styled it individually. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to head back out. So I was in typography of the quote. I'm going to click this arrow in the right hand corner. I'm going to get out of blocks. I'm going to head to my typography settings and I am going to change my text to a different font. You're going to notice that my list up here changes, but my quote block does not. So, oh, it did. Oh, it's because I didn't set the font. Okay, hold on. <laughs> the size should not change. So notice, okay. So because I didn't set the font, the font was changing. But because I set the size and the italics here, by changing the font size everywhere else, this is not changing. So as you're designing and you're going block by block, really consider if you want a certain block to stand out um, and just know that you're, you may have to go back and unstyle it <laughs> going forward. Um, great question in the chat. Someone said, hey, is it possible to export or import all the custom settings? Um, yeah, actually. <laughs> so let's say that I've styled this um, and I wanted to make it so that uh, these were the defaults so that if a client were to install this website, um, they they could do that and they, they you wouldn't see that this was a preference. Like it would just automatically be there. There is an export option up here that you can use. And when you export it, all of the choices that I just made here become hard coded into the files theme.json. It codes it for you. Um, there is a, that's a really advanced thing that you might do. There is a learn.wordpress.org tutorial that will cover that in depth. Uh, what is it? It is, you can also do the same process with create block theme. Um, it allows you to manage fonts and it also allows you to develop uh, block themes without any coding um, as well. Yeah, so there's this, there's a link to the, uh, to, not the tutorial, the, the plugin itself, which is really helpful and the way to use it here. So that is definitely a very advanced thing. For those of you who are new, don't worry about exporting it. You can just make whatever changes you would like to, where is it? To, to my templates here and it will stay. Um, so now I really like the way this looks. This is really pretty. It looks like a great writer's website. If I decide that I want to go and write some, some post content, here I go. The color is right. The color is right. The fonts are the same. My text size was predetermined. Hooray. You don't have to design it on every single page, which I don't know. I think is so exciting uh, just because of how hard this used to be once upon a time like 20 years ago, they just keep making better changes. Anyway, so that's the first thing that we recommend is by using that style book. So when you first get started, head to appearance, editor, click into your site, and then click on the styles button. And then rather than just clicking buttons over here, use this style book button so that you can see what your blocks will look like before you use them. Okay, pausing to see if there were any questions. I don't think so. Any, any thoughts before we move on? All right, let's move on to the next thing. So one thing that I, a huge mistake I made in a blog design of my own was uh, in posts and pages. Um, it, there's a, an option that does something similar known as settings. I'm going to show you where those are and what those look like. And it can be really tempting to use settings instead of the global styles. Um, I recommend not doing that unless you only want that to apply to just that one page. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. Um, so I'm going to head out of, I'm going to close some of these so I don't get lost. So I'm going to head to the content portion of my website. So my posts, my pages, and I'm going to click add new. So imagine that I want a white box and black text around every page I have, right? That kind of that looks kind of fun. So I'm going to start writing. If you're in the post or page editor, 
um, there is a very, very similar button and it looks like this. And you'll notice that it says settings. You'll also notice that there are color options here in settings. So I can say, hey, I'm gonna change my background. I'm gonna make it white and I'm gonna make my text black and I want this link to be blue. Like if I decide to write a link, it'll be blue. So I can publish that and you can see this page. It displays normally, right? Um, but let's say that I wanted that on every single page that I was doing, or conversely, let's say that I didn't want that anymore. I thought that I was doing this. And I needed to go back and, and I wanted to make my text look the way that it does everywhere else. Um, those settings can interfere. So <sighs> I'm trying to figure out how to explain this just a touch better. Um, basically it will only, if you use your settings, um, under edit page, which is separate than edit site. This is editing your content, what you're writing. This is editing the look and feel um, of your website. This is only going to appear on this page. So that can be good. It can be useful to know, but if I want to, if I use this on a lot of different pages, um, it's probably a better idea to head to your site editor and style that in global styles. So you're only styling this block right here you're not styling anything else. So if you wanted to make big sweeping changes under your appearance and editor, um, you'll notice that that block won't change. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna click in here. I'm just gonna pick a different style variation, just super fast, make it very, very obvious that this has changed. I now head back to that page. Okay, so it looks like the background uh, changed, but the text was pushed through that. I, that was unexpected, but you can see that this caused a problem and it's because I use this, the settings there. So if you have something weird like this that happens, that's one of the places where that, that can be the cause. So just, just be aware of that, keep that in mind. And if I wanna fix it and just clear it back to the defaults, I click on edit page. I use this handy dandy list view here. Um, if you are brand new, this list view is one of the best tools because it lets you figure out exactly what you're working with. Um, and I can just go through and deselect this. So clicking the same button removes the styling back to the default. So now if I go back to my site editor, I can make the changes that um, I would like and have it also apply to this page as well. So that was one gotcha that I had uh, that I hope this will save you from as you are designing your website. Okay, I don't see any questions, so let's keep going. Um, the next thing that you can do as you're styling your website and or blog is to create your blog frame with pictures. So think back to the, um, the picture frame analogy. Um, we want to get started fast, right? Um, I like to design things from scratch, which is a terrible idea for me because I am not a designer. Patterns help me do this very, very quickly. So let's say that you have styled your blog here. So appearance, oh, I'm on the wrong, wrong blog. I have to show you that later. <laughs> um, let's say that you're done styling appearance editor. We're back on our site editor here. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go back to the other style that we had because I liked it. <laughs> there we go. Well, we're all done. It's totally styled, ready to go. Um, the first thing that you're going to want to do is probably create a header, right? What appears at the very top of your website? So it can be tempting to do this in here. Um, there's a header block. You will notice that it is purple. Um, your footer also is, and that is because it is a template part. So this is a new thing that's coming out with 6.2. They have changed this so that you can know that something is a template part, basically the outer frame of your website that will always be there. Um, just, just keep that in mind. So you can edit this from here, but the, the thing to know about template parts, especially if you're new, is that if you make a change here, any other template that uses this header will also have that change made to it. So let me show you what, what I mean by that. So your blog is made up of multiple templates. So basically multiple layouts of how your content is displayed. So you'll notice I've got a 404 page. Oh no, my, my website doesn't exist. Uh, there's a header up here and there's a footer down there. There is that frame. It is always there. Um, you'll see this across a lot of things. So my page page, 
there's my header, scroll to the bottom, there's my footer. So a best practice for you as you're designing um, for the first time is to actually head over to template parts. So this is a button that appears now at 6.2. As soon as you enter the site editor, if you click this, um, you'll see a list here of different template parts. All themes offer different template parts. You will usually find at least one header, which means you can use more than one if you want, but you don't have to. And you will usually see a footer as well. So I recommend that you head to your header first and just pop the first part of that frame on. So once you're in here, make sure that you click on it so that you can start making changes. Oh, I'm sorry. Ha, huh, that's different. Apparently, you need to click this pencil button to edit it uh, when you move between template parts. And I think that's just to make sure that you're very aware, hey, I am editing the very top part of my website. So I'm going to click that. So right now, I'm going to use my list view. Again, if you're brand new, use your list view. Oh, it makes it so much easier. Um, and it looks like this is grouped together on mine. These little arrows allow you to expand this out so you can see the full list of blocks uh, that you are using to build your website. So right now it's got a site title, it's got a page list with navigation, um, and this row means that it's side by side, um, at least on full computers. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is as the screen size changes, um, it stacks. So this kind of shows you like what your mobile view uh, will look like as well. Um, so this is a new feature as well to 6.2. You see this little bar here? This allows me to expand my website to a full width if I would like. It also allows me to shrink it down so I can see what this will look like on people's mobile websites, which is really good news because it means that you can really see very quickly how this will look. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty simple header. Um, if you're like me, you probably want something like real fancy, maybe not, but you have a lot of options here. So one thing that you can do if you're adventurous, um, using your list view, I'm going to click these three dots here, and I'm going to remove this whole group. Seems real scary. One thing that you'll want to know if you're new uh, is that you can undo things <laughs> with a few clicks of a button. That undo button is right here. And Sean made the point the list view is helpful even if you are not brand new. Yes, the list view is the way that I, I keep what I'm doing straight. So I've got a paragraph block here. Okay, how do I add something new? We're going to go to our inserter button. And those of you who have been around WordPress for a while are going to see some new stuff here. You'll notice that we have blocks that we can build with. We also have patterns and media. If you're working in your template parts, this patterns button, uh, pulls from pre-made patterns that are made from uh, designers around WordPress who've submitted their work so that you can benefit from their design. Makes it a lot easier, um, especially if you're just getting started, um, to see kind of what you want. So I'm going to select this headers button because that's what I'm working on. And I have all of these different options here that I can pull from. Um, so let's say that Hmm, I like things that are fancy. So I'm going to grab this one and see what it does. I'm just going to click it. And you can see this is now automatically applied. So it's got this nice background image. Um, I think that this is a page that I wrote. Yeah, that was a page that I wrote. So <laughs> this is a navigation menu. Um, and you'll notice that it's, it's hard for me to know exactly what I'm looking at because I'm not using my list view. So let's see what it is that I actually put in here. Um, this is all expanded out except for this row. Site logo, site title, page list. Oh, and there's a spacer. So it looks like, oh, I can adjust the height of this as well. So I really like this. I like that background. I, I like, I think there must be a color overlay there to make sure that it, it's lovely. Um, but I can click that to see. Um, so you'll notice when I clicked it, it took me to something known as a cover block here. You're going to be able to find different block settings um, when you click on different things. So whether you click it on it in here or you click on it in your list view, you'll notice this bar is changing. So I can change it so that it has <laughs> green and red. I can select my own shadows and highlights. There's a lot that can be done um, with this toolbar. So the other place that you will find different settings for each individual block is going to be over here on the right under your styles. Um, you'll also notice that there are some settings in here as well. Um, and these different block settings will appear and give you different options. So 
because I'm working on the very top part of my picture frame, anything that I do here is going to be applied across the entire image. Um, so if someone asks, hey, can I change the background image? Like, can I can I pick the background? Yeah, absolutely. So this is one of the, so to do that, there's a replace button right here. Um, you can open your media library. If you have something in here, you can pick something or you can upload a file from your computer and completely replace it. And what's really cool about these settings for at least the cover block is you can choose, hey, I'll make this big so you can see it. You can pick where the focal point is. Let me try and up that contrast so that it's a little bit brighter. So you can see how that is changing. So yes, you can definitely change it. Catherine posted a great link in there as well. So I'm going to keep this nice and dark so that my text can be read. I'm going to save this, head back to my templates. And I do that by clicking on this W icon up here. This icon can change. If you set a site uh, icon or logo, I can't remember which it is, this W icon will be replaced by whatever one you choose. So it's this top icon, and then you can just navigate back. So th these are other template parts. If you click on templates now, Let's go look at our home page. I'm going to edit it. You can now see that this has appeared on this block. So, um, oh, I already made this sticky. Whoops, let me fix that really quick, y'all. I was practicing before today's session and forgot to turn this off. Hold on, I'll get over what I'm doing in just a second. Uh-oh, what did I do? Oh, did I actually figure out the thing that I couldn't do earlier? I think I figured out. Yeah, oh, open, the, open the position tab there on the right. The position tab? If you made it sticky, it would be under position. Oops, I know. Oh, there it is. Yeah. I just missed it. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. We're going to talk Easy about what that miss. is in a second. <laughs> so this allows you to manipulate that and change how things are. Um, but now every single uh, template that uses this that says, hey, I've got... No, that is not what I wanted to do. Back, back, I say. Every uh, template that you have that has a header in it that uses this header template part, any change I make to it will be right there automatically. So that's really, really cool. Um, and someone said earlier, hey, you can also just click on it and edit it here. Um, yeah, you totally can do that as well. Um, but do know that if you're doing this, uh, this is not just applied to this page. Um, my cover block settings that I was trying to look at. They're down here. Huh, they moved. Um, I want this to be full width. That's not working. I'm going to have to figure that out. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, the, it will apply everywhere else. So if you are working within one of these purple template parts, do know that if it's on another template, that change will be made as well. Um, cool. So there's a question about how would you control typography of captions or is it still via CSS? That's a good question. Why is this still sticky? I don't know why that's still sticky. Either way, I'll get there in a minute. It might be group fill with. Yeah, that might be it. Maybe. So, and one of the things that you'll notice is that um, this is taking me some trial and error too. Um, and I think it's really important to know that even if you are brand new, to, uh, or not brand new, even if you are advanced at using WordPress, you're still going to want to click around and see if you can figure out. Um, you're still going to have to click around and, and get used to it. I think I know what I did here. Did I do this in a different way? Did I, is this the sticky thing? Hold on. <laughs> we always learn things as we do this. Thank you so much for your time. So I'm in the group. There's that advanced. No, fascinating. Okay, I'm going to, have to figure that out in a minute. But highly recommend you start with your header, get it looking the way that you want it to look, and then head back to your template parts and do the same thing with your footer. And again, you can completely just remove it and add in a new pattern, or you can play with all of your different blocks using your inserter here um, to. Uh, yeah, to frame your picture. So that would be step two. <sighs> and this is our next thing, the sticking headers. So 
Um, once upon a time, once upon a time, it was not possible without CSS or coding to make it so that your header, oh, now it's working, what? I think I might have discovered a bug. <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice that this cover block now goes all the way across the screen. Um, just know that because this is so brand new, you may discover uh, some things like this. Uh, apparently, the changes that I made earlier were not automatically described on the screen, so I may put in a bug report about that. Anyway, um, but it didn't used to be possible to keep your header at the top. So you'll notice that when I scroll down right now, uh, the header disappears with it, right? Let's say that I want this to stay here. I would like anytime someone goes down to read, um, maybe I'll make this a little smaller so it looks a little bit better with that. Anytime somebody is reading, I want them to always see my logo, my, my site title and my navigation, just so they don't get lost. Um, what you can do is stick this to the top of the page. And that was what I was fighting with a little bit earlier today. So the way to do this um, is uh, it's not actually in the header template right now. So what you have to do is actually nest it inside of a different block. And that actually may be what was causing the problem earlier. So let me show you this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, if I wanna stick this to the top, this is a 6.2 feature, I'm gonna right click, um, and I am going to select this group button. Okay, there's something in the group block settings that's doing that, that's okay. But, why did it do that? Hold on. Go back. I want my header here. I want you to be grouped. There we go. All right. So now my header is inside this group. It is only within this group button and maybe the cover block option as well that a new uh, feature appears. So I've got this group block selected. And you'll notice that it doesn't appear here. This allows me to ungroup it. This allows me to move it. Uh, and there might be some other options here. But the way to get this to stick to the top of my page. It's under this position tab. If I select this and select sticky, the block will stick to the top of the window instead of scrolling with the website. So now check it out. Dun, dun, dun. You can see that it's there. Oh, wow. And it's see-through on the side. Oh, there's so many interesting things you could do with this. <gasps> That's really cool. Anyway, um, so this theme must have something in the group settings that puts the space on either side. I may go back and try and fix that in a little bit, but as you can see, um, this is, is stuck to the very top of this page, which could be a really cool feature. Um, so someone asked, can you do that with just the navigation? Great question. Let's find out. Um, I'm going to undo it right now. So I tested this earlier and you'll notice that I'm doing this um, in a template, not on the uh, template part itself. So I'm not sure this is gonna work, but we're gonna try it. So what I'm gonna do to try this, it may, may not work at all, this may crash and burn. I'm gonna head to my template part. I'm gonna click on header. And I'm going to edit this. And now I'm gonna use my list view. There's already a group there, there's a cover, there's a row, there's navigation. I might be able to do it just with this row. I think it needs to be grouped though, because I don't actually see that in these options. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is put this row inside of a group. So I'm going to write, right click and I'm gonna write group. So now if I click this button here to expand it, see what I'm looking at, you can see that this has been put inside that group. This group under my settings over here on the right should, is it template? No, hmm, I have group selected. Okay, so that feature did not show up, fascinating. Okay. So I think there might be a couple other ways around it. We may, towards the end, experiment with this a little bit more, but it looks like it has to be um, in a template, not a template part for this would be my thought. Catherine, do you have any ideas? You look like you have well, a thought. Yeah, I'm actually reading the GitHub ticket where this whole concept of sticky posts, the sticky parts was discussed and Eagle just chime in says it only works on the parent group. So uh, somebody else pointed out earlier that when you start nesting 
groups like that, you get limitations as to which piece of it can be sticky, okay. which makes sense because you, you're just going to start to get some really weird effects. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's take this out of the. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm going to try and move this out of here. It doesn't want to move out of here, though, does it? Come on, you. There we go. All right. So I moved this out of it. So it's no longer uh, in here anymore. But it is now the parent group. Aha, our position button has reappeared. So position, sticky. Let's save it. Let's head back to our templates and see what that did. Fascinating, y'all. What great questions you're asking. Here we go, templates. Let's go to our index here. It did. Oh, interesting. It only did within that template, Catherine. Did you see that? So you'll notice that it scrolled for a minute. And that like it, it stuck for a minute and then it kept going. So it only stayed as far as that template part went. Wow. I think the idea is that it's meant to be for the whole header. <laughs> so <laughs> while you can start experimenting like this, like looking at this ticket, like the whole concept is fixed position, yeah. header and footer template parts. So that's, <laughs> yeah, as Micro says, it won't jump to another group block. Um, yeah, that's, I love that though. What a cool effect. <laughs> Like you could do a lot with this. Ah, I love it. Okay. Wow. That just, that feels fancy. All right. Let's keep going for the sake of time. Great questions, y'all. So you'll notice that we're learning together and you will learn new things every time you play with the site editor and that is expected and okay. And it gets better and better. Okay. So next one, no pictures, no problem. Um, once upon a time, when I was a student, uh, I used to go and just rip pictures off of Google. Turns out you're not supposed to do that. There are copyright issues and you don't want to get sued and or fired. So what can you do if you, you know, are not a master photographer or graphic designer? There is a new feature with 6.2 um, that allows you to grab some photos. So let's say we were writing a post. Let's add a new post. My new post. Say I wanna start with an image. If you click up here to your block inserter, um, there is now a button that says media. So if you select that, there is a button there called open verse. And I can search open verse for all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna look for, apparently there's not a picture of a Sharpe. Sharpe? No, let's go with dog. <laughs> there we go. Oh, look at this, this little sweet wrinkle dog. Okay, so you are able to um, find images that you are welcome to use on your website here. So this beats just going to Google because you're probably not going to get sued for using these because they are open source. Um, so I click it and you'll see a couple of things happened here. So we've got the title, Pug Dog by Matthew, and then this here, the CC01.0, this is the Creative Commons license. So what this does is this tells you how you are allowed to use it. So this is a public domain dedication. Um, it's the human readable version of what this is. So the person who, who took this picture, um, they dedicated this work to the public domain. They said, hey, this isn't mine. Use it. Enjoy it. It's great. Um, and you can copy this, you can modify it, you can distribute it, um, even for commercial purposes, all without asking per permission. Um, so there are a couple of rules here, like don't, you know, say that the artist endorsed them, like endorsed your website when they didn't. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, I ha I'd have to explore this. This is so new that I, I'm not sure about like this, but some of them require attribution. So it's the title of what it is. It is the author. I'm not sure that this one does. I'd have to look into it, but definitely check these licenses if you're worried about it. Um, it's always a great idea to give a nod to the people who took the photos, um, but definitely do check the license conditions of the images that, that you pick. Um, and you'll also notice that under this media open verse, search here there there's there are these like three dots you can also report images because it is open source sometimes something might slip through um if it should not be on this page please don't hesitate to report an image or two so and someone said yes this sounds easier than using stock images yeah i have found it to be significantly easier it's streamlined my workflow um <laughs> so there was that, um, and I can publish this page. 
Um, I can view my post. And yeah, it's all right there. So I, I think you might be getting the hang of this so far. Um, the last thing that I wanted to show you is a new feature. Um, is pushing up one block style to all the others uh, in its class as well. This is a more advanced feature. I've been playing with this for two days. It did not work the way that I expected it to. Catherine solved the problem though. Um, if you style a block, you can copy and paste it um, in a way that preserves the things that you have styled. Um, so I actually have to, Catherine realized that you had to have uh, an SSL certificate, uh, which your local WordPress installation will not do <laughs> for you. Um, so in order to do this, I go to add new post. This is just my personal food blog. So it's just where I store recipes because I'm too lazy to write them by hand. Um, here is a post. This is a block. So now I can style this block if I want to the best of my ability. And if I want to, I can copy this block. And I can underneath it, let me, using my inserter, always reminding myself, I can duplicate that block. Or if I, I am writing a new block. Oh wait, I'm not up, oh, I'm not upgraded to 6.2. I knew there was something I was forgetting. So in 6.2, when you select this, there will be an option that says copy block styles. You will be able to paste those block styles directly onto here, and it will then match what I did up here. So I don't have time to, to do that, but it's just something to be aware of something that's coming um, with the sneak peek. So yeah, we are coming up on time here. Um, there's also a way that you can push a style to every single other block that utilizes it. I haven't figured that one out yet. I'm rerunning this and hopefully we'll have that figured out by the next time next week. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm curious and we'll have some time for questions at the end here. Um, now that you, you've sat through this, this presentation, how much do you know now about setting up a blog with WordPress? I'm just curious. Eagle says a five, yay. I don't know if that's different. I have to, have to compare, but <laughs> um, Sean asks, is the 6.2 still have the reusable block feature? You love that feature? Yes, it does. I don't think that feature is going anywhere. Oh yay, a 4.5. Any others? Any others? <laughs> Let's see a four, a four. Micro says that 6.2 should also just pull in Creative Commons 2, meaning that just ones that are completely free to use. Okay. I don't know if that's a, a thing that we know for a fact or if that's like probably what we should suggest that we do. Um, if you if that's a fact, let me know. <laughs> if uh, you're just saying, hey, this is what I would like to have them. That that's good to to let us know too. I'm seeing a five, a four point five. Okay. Well, lovely. Okay, cool. Any final questions um, from today's presentation? Today, is there anything that you'd like to see? Do you want to see me like troubleshoot things? <laughs> I'm gonna click on my edit site button up here. I'm really curious about like, because grouping this block is what, what did that, right? So I'm going to head to that template part because I want to see if I can make that go the full width. Template parts. And if you have a question, feel free to ask right now. I'm just kind of, so this should be the full width here. Why is it not? I think it's because it's in a group. not seeing I can ungroup it which might fix it so I can transform it from a group to a row to a stack inner blocks use content width so this says nested blocks will fill that if I turn that on oh interesting I wonder if that's what's causing it position default can make that sticky because it's a group. Let's see what happens if I just remove this group, not remove the group, ungroup it. Just want to see. Now I'm going to head back to a template, not a template part, templates. Nope, it's still fascinating. 
sometimes things just work in interesting ways. I wonder if there is a style with that group blocks. I think I was in settings. Let's look in styles. So one thing that you'll notice is that there are lots of places to do a lot of things, right? We have our settings, we have our styles. Um, I'm going to go to the group block and see if there's anything set there. I'm finding it right there. There's a layout button. Oh, fun. Well, it doesn't look like it. I can add padding. <laughs> oh, fascinating. Get out of order. Oh, wow. <laughs> You'll just notice that you can discover really fun things. Um, all right. Catherine says, please note that Openverse does not verify whether the images are properly licensed, like for Creative Commons, or whether the attribution and other licensing information that we've aggregated is completely accurate or complete. So do double check. Great. What a it's great idea. Copy paste from their page. So it's just better safe to be uh, better to be safe than sorry. They don't really say anything there that mm -hmm. I can see about specific CC licenses. Okay. And they're giving a warning that they haven't even double checked. So it's on it's on us <laughs> as site creators to check that. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> Cool. Well, let's go ahead and end this a little early. I hope that this was an exciting peek into 6.2 and we will see you next time, y'all. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Catherine, for all of your help.